Hey YouTube, it's Echo. Uh, I'm doing my four month video pretty much on time. Actually, the rest of them have been a little behind. I said that I should start writing down my changes, and so I actually went and I, um, <clears throat> I wrote them in this, whatever this is, Windows something document, so I can actually read them out and talk about my changes, because I never remember them at the same time. Okay, so for starters, I guess we can talk about... Um, we'll go with emotional changes. So I mentioned before about being less emotional. And I really should rephrase that, because it's not less emotional. I just feel like with women, they have a harder time... Um, they have a harder time controlling that emotional outburst, as I would call it. When you feel like crying, you can't help it. Like, you just can't help it. You cry. Or, you know, if you're angry, you just can't let it go. Like, you're just pissed. Um, so I don't think, as a male or auntie, you're less emotional. I just think you have more control over that emotional outburst response. <clears throat> So, I don't know, you don't, when you feel like crying, I mean, you still feel sad, you still, ha you still have that emotion, you just can control whether or not you want to cry, I guess, I suppose that makes sense. Um, I feel like my patience levels emotionally have done a 180. What I used to be really patient with just annoys me now, like when people feel sorry for themselves, I'm just like... Come on, man. I used to take a really nurturing response to it. And now I'm like, do what it takes to make your life better. Stop sitting here and burying your head in the sand and crying about it. Because it's not going to fix anything for you. Um, whereas before, I was like really compassionate. It was like, you just need help. Now it just like drives me nuts. Because I understand people need help every once in a while. But sometimes it's just like, there's a point where you got to do what you got to do to make it better. Um... But then things that used to irritate me when I was, before I was on T, like children, for instance. Um, I grew up in a family with eight kids. My mom has five, my dad has three, so, aside from me. So, just never, I was just like, ah. Oh. But now I have like a world of patience for children. And they're so much fun and they actually bring a lot of joy to my life. And just they're funny little personalities and creative minds just make me happy, you know. So I feel like being on T has helped me kind of balance what's important in my life. I can't say the same for everybody else because I don't know. <clears throat> um, I mean, I guess we can talk about physical changes now. My facial hair, see this shadowing? That's not a shadow, that's actually my facial hair. You guys can finally start to see it. Yes. Um, I'm getting more hair everywhere. Like where there was peach fuzz, it's now darkening. And on my face, it's not just growing like on my face, but it's growing my sideburns, uh, my chin, my goatee area, and now my neck. It's actually coming down here. And as you can see, getting acne everywhere from it it's, I guess that's the price you pay but I I'm excited for it so you know um my skin texture is changing it's a lot more rough so anytime I feel Ari skin I'm like oh my god your skin's so soft but it's because mine's more I guess the texture of it's rougher um, my veins continue to get larger and show up in areas that they never were before, especially my arms, hands, and feet. Especially my feet, but my arms and hands are really bad too. Let's see here. Uh, I guess this is an emotional one, but I take things I take things less personally, so I'm like a lot more sarcastic about things, and it comes off rude. And I don't really mean it rude, but it's just like I kind of say things not without thinking, but it's funny to me because I don't take things personally. I guess I need that's something I need to work on. Um, 
My facial structure continues to change, which, there we go, it's a lot brighter, continues to change, so it amazes me, and I see myself every day in the mirror. It's crazy to see how, you know, especially looking back on old YouTube videos. Um, um, my, my, this is even an awkward conversation to talk about, but my, my, <laughs> having a hard time saying it. Uh, my breast tissue is really depleting, especially the right side. It's almost just a peck when I flex it. It's really, I mean, I'm half tempted to show you because it's just non-existent. And I have really small nipples anyway, so it probably wouldn't look any different than a, just a guy's peck. But my right, but my left side is a different story, so I'll spare you. Um, but I'm almost 100% certain that I'm going to have keyhole procedure when I have uh, my chest surgery. Which, for those of you who don't know, um, there are two kinds. There's so my bad from work. Look how cheesy I look. <laughs> um, there's two kinds. There's one where they do an incision. Um, it's called double ins incision all the way underneath. And they take everything out, and then there's scars right here, and then a couple right here where your drains are. Or there's keyhole, where they just do a small incision around the nipple, and then they take, they put a thing in there and suck it all out. So keyholes, um, they usually do it for FTMs with smaller breasts, which mine are not even A's, I don't even know what they would be considered. And um, it's harder if you have bigger nipples but there's less scarring. Um, I know, I've heard that, um, you know, there's benefits and and basically pros and cons to either one, but I think I'm going to go with a uh, keyhole procedure. Um, let's see, I've gained over 25 pounds, and it's not fat. It's just random muscle. I have muscles in areas I've never had muscles before. Which is awesome, but at the same time, it's kind of a pain in the ass, because I used to be really agile and, like, quick, and now I realize I slam into things a lot. I'm a lot more clumsy, and I also get cramps in my muscles now that they're getting larger. Um, there's been thickening in my feet a lot. I actually had to go up a shoe size because my feet have grown. I'm in now, now I'm in a men's 8, just a regular shoe, and a men's 9 in a business shoe. So, let's see, um, the topic that everybody is always curious about, growth in the nether region, yes, absolutely, I actually started seeing growth down there probably within the first couple of weeks on testosterone, and it's just like, it's kind of swollen, it's weird, but now you can definitely see a difference, um, and you would think that the larger it gets, the less stimulation you would need sexually down there. But I've noticed <clears throat> it actually takes more because there's more area to cover, I guess. I don't know if this applies to everybody, but... <sighs> okay. Sorry about that. Um, my sex drive has increased considerably, but not drastically. It's not whole lot different from what it was before, but I'm definitely a lot more sexually driven than I was before. I've had an energy increase, a uh, definite confidence increase significantly. I believe it has to do with um, liking the changes of the transition and just like truly enjoying becoming who I feel like I always should have been all along. Um, I have had app appetite changes. I mean, sometimes I eat way more than I usually do. And sometimes I just eat normally. I think it has to do with, like, like I think it sways depending on my growth spurt at that time. Because I am gaining a lot of weight and, like, a lot of changes are happening. So I, sometimes I'm just like, fuck, I'm hungry all the time. And then sometimes I'm like, man, eh, I could just, I could go for a couple hours and not even think about food. Um... I think that's mainly most of the changes. I wrote them all down, and then I was reading them off this paper for you guys so I could actually remember what was going on. So, yeah, so far that's what's happened. Um, aside from that, going to work a lot. It's kind of cool seeing everybody start just naturally 
identifying you as male and not even thinking twice about it. It's a very comfortable feeling and you don't feel like you're just, I mean, I can't explain how weird it is being called she or being naturally or normally as soon as you meet somebody identified as a female. It's just the most awkward feeling. I can't explain it. So it's very nice to not have to worry about that anymore. Um, sorry, my voice sounds like I'm sick. I just got my shot a couple days ago, and this happens every time right after I get my shot. Kind of like sounds sick and then a uh, drop in pitch. So I'm excited for future voice changes, I suppose. Aside from that, I don't think there's anything else really to talk about. I'm going to go. It's my Friday. I worked almost nine days straight. I had like one day in between where I had a day off and then I had nine days at a collections job where you're hearing people bitch about their life all day long and you just want to get away. So I think I'm going to go and leave you with that. Any questions, comments, anything, um, feel free to message me. Any FTMs who are maybe uncomfortable with talking via the internet and you're thinking about transitioning or you're having a hard time with your transition, I'm always open to um, talking, giving my phone number out, if that's awkward, not really, but if you ever need any help, I know that other FTMs help me a lot, a lot, just by watching their videos, so I'd like to extend that out there and hopefully I can maybe make a difference in somebody else's life who's having a rough time with this as well. Because I was, and now it's um, probably the best thing I've ever done for myself. So, love you, YouTubers. Thank you for watching my channel, liking, subscribing, even just, I guess, stopping by to see a video. Either way, shape, or form, you're suppo supporting me in one way, so I do appreciate it. Um, you guys have a good night, and, you know, you know what to do if you have any questions, comments. Bye.